The second uh, report is called the influence of the wavelength of the laser radiation on the efficiency of coagulation of varicose veins uh, by Mr. Belay from the city of Saransk. <coughs> Uh, dear colleagues, you know, you have been talking about also all this time, but to make it more diverse, uh, don't you mind listening to a report uh, on another subject, because ozone and laser are unite physical methods of impact, physical antiseptics, for example, if you're third year student, you would know this, if you were a third year student, you would know this. So I will tell you about the influence of the wavelength of the laser radiation on the efficacy of coagulation of varicose veins. What uh, is our problem now? If you uh, look at the treatment of varicose diseases, the traditional approach would be venectomy certain methods there like uh, Bipcock methods which are softer methods uh, but now everyone is uh, basically switching to this brand new method of varicose it is a treatment like endovasal coagulation of veins or which is a soft cosmetic method which uh, re recovers uh, patients quickly but there are certain problems uh, just like in any methods of treatment sometimes there are complications and now, uh, the, uh, the task is uh, to reduce the number of complications. Where do the complications come from? First, it's hemorrhage. Uh, also, damage of the nerves, damage of the subcutaneous nerves. Sometimes it's uh, cutaneous burns. And how do we negate these complications? How do we mitigate them? This is uh, the subject of my report. It's a dissertation work, actually, but sometimes postgraduate students have less time than their mentors, so that's the reason why I'm here. Just like Sergei Vladimirovich, <coughs> because he's a professor also, of course. If you dig deeper into this, the mechanism of action of the laser can be divided into a hemoglobin with a wavelength of 6 uh, 100 to 800 and water ones with a wavelength of uh, 1000 to uh, 1200 to 2000 nanometers and the hemoglobin ones act uh, upon hemoglobin they make a blood boil and the thermic factors act upon the inner sheath of the vein but the water the aqueous uh, laser they act upon uh, the wall of uh, veins because usually it contains water inside and the laser uh, beam acts upon it directly okay the more powerful the laser radiation is uh, the more the vein is damaged and the less uh, process of recanalization and uh, re recurrences there are so that's why you have to have enough power when the wavelength is 810 nanometers 15 watts is to be used but there is a flip side uh, you know, when uh, the uh, light carrier is inside the vein it contacts with the wall of the vein and it perforate, perforates it I wanna I want to point the laser beam at the screen. Uh, there is a button in the middle. You can see the perforation, you can see how it's perforated. And uh, that's how it's perforated. Um, and these are the clinical presentations of this coagulation. There is a blood thrombosis along the way of the vein. So these are the complications. Microscopically, when viewed microscopically, these are the results that we obtained. Uh, with uh, this power, which is high, well, it's not so high, but still it leads to complications. Sometimes uh, the power is higher, 20 to 25 watts. And this is a micro drug, 
The vein is fully damaged. The differentiation of the muscular sheath is uh, uh, damaged. There is a vacuolization and there is perforation in the area of the contact. And you can see this perforated hole there. And through this perforated hole, blood comes out uh, from the subcutaneous uh, cellulose. And our job is uh, to put a stop to the vein perforation process. The first thing is to reduce the power of the laser radiation. This is acceptable. The second thing is to accelerate the extraction of the electrode. And by accelerating the speed, we unfortunately do not obliterate the vein well. There is no proper coagulation inside. So only the first option remains. Uh, in order to reduce these complications, we can only use the first option. Now the second one. The aim of the paper is to give a comparative evaluation of the degree of varicose vein damage in laser coagulation using uh, a wavelength of 810 and 8, uh, 1885 nanometers and a minimum power of 2.8 watts, which is quite a low power of laser radiation. <coughs> The reason why we started uh, working with this is because uh, we have a lab of optical spectroscopy in our lab for laser materials that is engaged in issues of uh, solid uh, production. They produce a new laser sources for generating radiation at a wavelength of 1,825 nanometers with an output power up to 4.2 watts. This is uh, the wavelength, uh, which is a new one. It's not used anywhere in the world. Now it's undergoing tests, uh, and uh, we have publications in Russia and. Uh, around the world, like in the Laser Medicine, which is a European journal, they have taken an interest in it. So now we're trying to get in contact with those people who produce and invent laser equipment in order to find clinical application for this new wavelength. This is an experimental device which was used for experimental studies uh, of endovasal laser coagulation. We have this vein segment uh, which was uh, taken during the open venoctomy surgery, Babcock surgery. This part of the vein was uh, extracted and put into this glass container, a special container. And this is a motorized table which uh, went up and down. And this is a laser conduit. Uh, and it sets an accurate speed in order to burn through, uh, to burn within the vein. We had stand experiments on segments of very close veins, like I said, with a length of six and zero point six centimeters, six centimeters um, uh, taken uh, during the venectomy using the Babcock method, and these are the sizes of veins we used. Two, there were two experiments. The first experiment included six experiments, uh, sub-experiments, with a length of 6.10 and 810 nanometers. You know, the speed of the extraction of the electrode was 8.8, uh, uh, sorry, 0 0.8 minutes per second, and a power 2.8 watts. The second experiment was different in terms of the wavelength. So, in the first experiment, after laser radiation was applied to the wall on the vein, this is the vein before and after the radiation. You see, uh, the color of the vein has, is a little bit more dimmed, and the diameter has shrunk. There is a microscopic translucency of the vein. There is internal destruction of the inner sheath, but the muscle sheath is still there. Uh, the changes are down to a minimum, and you can recognize it can recognize uh, quite quickly. And there is uh, the likelihood of recurrences. The second experiment: uh, the wavelength is eight, 1,885 nanometers. The same parameters are there. But if you look at it, uh, you can see two types of veins before and after coagulation. In the coagulation area, the vein changes its color, becoming more dim with the diameter shrinking down by 40%. <laughs> and this is uh, the area where we see this uh, dark vein where it comes into contact with the light carrier. 
and this is uh, the microscopic examination of the vein in the area of laser contact coagulation and we can see full destruction of the veins wall uh, the differentiation of the muscle sheath is uh, lost there are some free fragments and um, the lumen of the vein is uh, narrow you can see areas of total destruction of the veins wall or the wall of the vein and this is some histology that you can see when the wavelength is 810 with the lumen of the vein still there and uh, it's only the intimate that's a little bit more thick uh, he in here also for comparison here the wavelength was 1885 nanometers and uh, those who are not initiated would know that uh, the vein is totally destroyed uh, the differentiation of the muscle sheath is not observed and this vein can be easily and quickly obliterated <coughs> discussions or as a conclusion I need to say that the laser coagulation generates two problems to be solved the first one is uh, about uh, the insufficient uh, if the vein is not coagulated sufficiently there is a recurrence the second problem is an opposite one if we put too much power too many complications occur all the way up to um, Cutaneous burns, so yeah, I am engaged in, in the vasocoagulation. I'm an expert on this, and sometimes we see cutaneous burns because of the heat exposure. So we can solve it in two ways. So we, first, we could reduce the power uh, down to a minimum, but uh, this reduction in the power is only possible if you use uh, a specific wavelength that uh, acts uh, upon not hemoglobin but uh, the wall of the vein uh, working around its uh, destruction in this way selectively so when the wavelength is uh, such uh, there is enough destruction of the wall of the vein conclusions one of the ways to prevent complications following laser coagulation of very close of veins would be to reduce the power of laser radiation the wavelength of 1885 nanometers at a minimum power uh, output of 2.8 um, watts uh, during laser coagulation of varicose veins leads uh, to more significantly more uh, destruction of the uh, vein wall and ob obliteration of lumen uh, as compared to a wavelength of 810 nanometers thank you very much for listening to me then you stick 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 uh, well, uh, we uh, probably, I um, can't say about uh, the light carrier, they have one of their own. We were cooperating with physicists. The phys it was a grant, it was based on a grant, on a scholarship, so the physicists were in, responsible for the physics of the process, but if you want to know more about the diameter, it would be about one and a half uh, or so it could be 0 0.5 mm millimeter any anesthesia there any anesthesia there <coughs> well uh, those were experimental mm, studies on the segments of veins but you have this uh, living picture no 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 it was all an experiment uh, there was just a veins ex segments extracted on venoctomy decoc venoctomy it was uh, there was an anesthesia. However, uh, sometimes a local anesthesia can be performed during local anesthesia. Sometimes spinal anesthesia is used. It's used quite uh, widely if uh, the power is high and you get perforation. Together with it, you get coagulation. How to get hematoma? So during coagulation, coagulation leads to perforations of the wall of veins walls over veins the lumen doesn't shut down right away there is a like a casket of blood coming out histologically I showed that in the lumen of the coagulation I mean the lumen of the perforation there is a drum a blood clot but the blood clot uh, forms uh, right after the blood is out and uh, this is the main reason of uh, the hemorrhage 
to continue as far as I know because once uh, I was uh, ex uh, engaged in these issues if the diameter of the vessel is over 2 millimeters thermal coagulation uh, thermal laser coagulation don't save the patient because uh, there is so much blood lost uh, and the blood clot can't just get there but um, here we're dealing with uh, large veins uh, the diameter of veins here mm -hmm. so the thickness uh, is not real clear also Show some pictures there. At the end of your presentation, I saw that the lumen of the vessel there is quite large after the influence uh, of laser radiation. What would be the point if there is no coagulation? Okay, I know, I know what you're talking about. You always uh, have some clinical things that have to do with the real coagulation, right? On Lucky. An experimental studies on uh, vein fragments. And there you go, saying that there is some cutaneous burns can occur, but uh, what cutaneous burns could occur? Because you're not working with the skin, you're working with the vessel. Right? These are two different things. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. I'm, I have one more question so that I won't forget it in the future. As far as I know, and I would like to answer your question, what I have shown is an experiment. There is no blood inside. It's an empty vein or physiological solution. When calculated calculate its vein, especially in hemoglobin laser, there was a thrombus and it was obliterated, then the vein closed up. But it was not in this experiment. No, it was not in this experiment. This is a theoretical thing. The, the, the issue here is when you when the trump bus is creative and can recognize five uh, and this recognition happens or in literature says there's a there's an opening of the vein happenings uh, first of all with no blood we have experiments on animals where thrum occluses opening and the second question in this subjects well the thing if you have an empty vessel or filled up with a physiological solution it is a completely different thing and impacts are different and in this case you, you mentioned that the the, 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 the laser, you, you call them, I did not hear such a term before, what did you call them, laser? No, we use this term, classical term, that is used in all of the sources in the cell population on laser therapy. It is was not, it was not my invention. Okay, those were lasers affect as walls that have lo lots of water concentration. We take a look at the vessel water concentration. It's up to 60 percent max. Well, what about? I think in muscle tissues about up to 80, and I think in, in what is 90 more of water. What the question is? The real picture when we have um, a vein, a vessel, and there is a blood in it, and laser coagulation is produced. But what about the blood? But the blood, because blood has much more abs absorption in the water composition in such division, division of lasers as per their um, the length of the waves, but and. This was a very complicated question, it was a long one. Of course, uh, the, the, there is a difference in the vein opening, either blood or physiological solution. Is a huge difference. If it is a physiological solution, we perform laser coagulation, a blend of light.
That is the way. In yes, there, there is a covering film, and this film creates high temperature. And this high temperature results in obliteration and perforation. That's why um, the question is how to how to dodge this formation when retrocedes are melted. The more damage the vein is, yeah. we have performed experiments, but that's not the case. Sometimes the more soft vein damage is not enough to have a perforation for in colleagues is just to lift it up, lift the vein up in order to, to create an opening so that the less blood concentration will be in the vein. We usually have questions were asked. Not so many people here really understand the, the topic and it's a complicated one.